One Zambia, One Nation, live from our Lusaka studios with the news. My name is Collins Mienga and the sign language interpreter is Pastor Samson Mwale. We start the news with the headlines. Eleven people are feared dead in Nchelenge after the boat they were on capsized in Lake Muelu. The Drug Enforcement Commission has arrested former Zambia Air Force Commander Lieutenant General Eric Chimese. The United Party for National Development has scooped the Fesheke parliamentary by election, but the PF says it will petition the results on to violence. A Kana Football Club this afternoon came from behind to beat visiting Hal Hali of Sudan. Thank you for joining us. So now the news in detail. 11 people are feared dead in Chelenge after the boat they were on capsized on Lake Muelu. In Chelenge, member of our parliament, Anton Malama, says the boat was carrying 31 passengers and 19 have been rescued by the Marines. Mr. Malama has told the NBC News in Kitwe by telephone that the boat was transporting passengers and goods to Isokwe Island on Lake Muelu when it capsized due to heavy currents on the lake. And Mr. Malama said the rescue operation by the Marines is still underway and all will continue until everyone that was on the boat is accounted for. The Drug Enforcement Commission has challenged and arrested former Zambia Air Force ZAF Commander Lieutenant General Eric Chimese for alleged various criminal activities. General Chimese has been arrested for allegedly concealing property with giving of false information abuse of authority of office and possession of property reasonably suspected to be proceeds of crime. The former ZAF commander aged 50 is jointly charged under four counts with Chita Lodge's limited director James Chungu 51. The Drug Enforcement Commission deck spokesperson Teresa Katongo confirmed the arrest of General Chimese and his call accused at a media briefing in Lusaka today. The suspects are between January 1, 2018 and January 31, 2019, alleged to have concealed a farm in Ibex Hill in Lusaka on which nine fully furnished flats, a one-story house and other structures have been constructed. Uh, Ms. Katongo said this was by purporting to show that the said properties belong to Chita Lodges Limited, a company where Mr. Chungu is a director when in fact not. The commission has since seized the properties, which include 13 fully furnished houses, one semi-detached house, and a gym, all within Lusaka. Lieutenant General Eric Chimese retired on dates unknown, but between January 2018 and 31st January 2019, jointly and whilst acting together with James Chungu and other persons unknown, did conceal a portion of a farm in Ibex Hill in Lusaka on which nine fully finished flats, an upstairs house, a gym, visitors' quarters, and a semi detached servants' quarters have been constructing, constructed, purporting to show that the said properties belong to Cheetah Lodges Limited, a company where James Chungu is a director, when in fact the properties in question are owned and were constructed by Lieutenant General Chimese. The United Party for National Development, UPND, has scooped the Sesheke parliamentary by-election. UPND's Romeo Kangombe beat other contestants after polling 8,496 votes. PFD Marcelo got 3,640. Returning officer Joseph Kanyemba who had earlier declared Mr. Kangombe winner after results from 35 out of 43 polling stations announced the final results at 13.11 hours today. UPPZ candidate Victor Kalimukwa came third with 160 votes. P 
People's Alliance for Change candidate Charit Muhao came forth with 139. Mr. Kanyemba declared that 12,516 votes were cast, with 8-1 having been rejected. But the PF says it will petition the Sesheke parliamentary by-election owing to violence, intimidation and brutality by the opposition UPND. PF Secretary General David Smuela says the PF lost the election in Sesheke, not that it's unpopular in Western Province, but because of the intimidation of voters by the UPND. Speaking during a media briefing in Lusaka today, Mr. Smuela, however, thanked the PF membership in Western Province and the campaign team for enduring the situation in Sesheke. Kalimukwa Victor of UPPZ had 141 votes. Masule Din of PF had 3,297 votes. And Kangombe Romeo had 7,768 votes. Total votes cast was 11,419, of which rejected papers were 76. Therefore, I, Joseph Jeffrey Kanyemba, being the returning officer for Sesheke by election, do hereby declare that Romeo Kangombe of the United Party for National Development, UPND, is having duly been elected as member of parliament for Sesheke constituency. <laughs> Our petitioning of the violence read in Sesheke uh, election results. The Patriot Front hates violence. In light of the foregoing, let it there be, let therefore be made clear that we will petition the violence induce the results of the Sesheke by election. We also look forward to the Bahat by election, which we shall adequately be prepared for. And the PF has scooped the Mnyama Ward local government by election in Kawa's Wacha constituency. PF is Grigoli Makungu poured 386 votes, while his rival from the UPND poured 348 votes. Zanis reports that retaining officer Nelly Chimuka declared Mr. Makungu winner at 2245 hours at the district totaling center. And the PF has scooped the Siwa Mongole local government seat in Chavuma district. Zanis reports that retaining officer Peter Zulu declared PF candidate Jonathan Longe win at 23-26 hours after he poured 487 votes. UPND Evans got 252 votes. And PF campaign manager Ino Kikapalu said the party's victory is clear indication that it has been welcomed in Chavuma, which has been one of the strongholds for the opposition UPND. Meanwhile, PF Northwestern Province Chairperson Jackson Kungu said that the people of Suwa decided to vote for the PF candidate because they have seen the development taking place in the district. Uh, Minister of Mines Richard Musukwa has summoned Chambishi Matos over the suspension of operations at its state of the art smelter in Chambishi on the Copper Belt. Chambishi Metals, with a workforce of over 550, has sent 351 workers on paid forced leave with only a skeleton staff to undertake care and maintenance. Details are in the following report. Chambishi Metals, owned by the Eurasian Natural Resources Company, is involved in mining, refining, and tolling of cobalt and copper concentrates. The mine, which imports all these materials from the Democratic Republic of Congo, has been crying over lack of consistent feed from that country in the recent past. And today, the mine, one of Zambia's largest cobalt producers with 550 workers, has sent 351 employees home. Because the, this asset is, is so precious to this, to this country, not, not only because of the job opportunities that are there, but because it is the only company that is producing cobalt and it's a flagship for this country. Government, through ZCCMIH, holds 10% shares in the mine. The Mine Workers Union of Zambia is asking government to take the mine to task over its future.
I want to ensure that uh, I meet the directors of Chambesh Metals in order for us uh, to structure a way forward. The youth state of art processing facility at Chambesh Metals, which traditionally used to get the all materials locally, must invest in development of the production of materials. And the, that the import of raw materials must be a stopgap measure while the development trajectory of ensuring that they support the processing plant with locally generated material is key. Chambishi produced over 230,000 tons of blister copper and anodes in 2018. Lillian Kalaba, ZNBC News, Kitwe. And that report brings us to the first conventional break. And just now, we take a break. We'll be back on the other side. Minister in the office of the Vice President, Sylvia Charlie Kosa, is impressed with the work done on the Musuzi Bridge on the Chipata Lundazi Road, where the Bailey Bridge is being constructed. Ms. Charlie Kosa has advised residents of Lundazi not to vandalize the Bailey Bridge. Let's get the details in the following report. At Musuzi Bailey Bridge are progressing well. 90% of the works have been done so far government through the disaster management and mitigation unit minister of defense and rda is facilitating the construction of the belly bridge the bridge has since been mounted and minister in the office of the vice president sylvia charikosa inspected the bridge what we need is more responses like this before roads are cut off so i hope that uh, under the rda program you have a maintenance um, uh, program because the road we use from the airstrip to here is graveled, all right, but it's already developing lots of potholes. I think there is need for us to have regular maintenance so that even the gravel roads are passable. And Defense Permanent Secretary Stad Mwale had a message from the President to deliver to the task force working on the bridge. Uh, His Excellency sent us here to come and um, encourage our men in uniform to do even better because, like I have said, we are working together with the Disaster and Management Mitigation Unit, and uh, this is a national calamity. Uh, it's a disaster, and uh, we are appealing to them that uh, the moment they finish here, our colleagues at Zambia, we have been faced with so many disasters where bridges have been washed uh, away. So we are appealing to our men and women in uniform to up the game. Musuzi Bridge connects Chipata and Dundazi, and the disaster has affected the distribution of farming inputs. Delfista Lungu, TV2 News, Ilundazi District, Eastern Province. The government says it will not relent in fighting corruption at all levels of governance in order to make Zambians benefit from national resources. Chief Government Spokesperson Dora Silia told journalists at a media briefing in Lusaka today that Zambia was recently awarded for its efforts in fighting corruption. Patrick Mulenga now gives us the details in the following report. Violence on television, whether it is the opposition or it is uh, the party in government. She has given the government's position on the coverage of the Sisiake by election by some private media houses. In her capacity as Minister of Information, Ms. Lea also counseled journalists against what she termed unprofessional reporting. I am extremely committed to media freedom. Extremely committed. And I've said this to you many, many times, but let us not equate poor journalism, substandard journalism, with enjoying freedom of the press. Those are two different things. During the briefing, Ms. Celia disclosed that her permanent secretary, Chandaka Solo, has been tasked to investigate the alleged and professional misconduct of prime television in the run-up to the Shekebai election been very concerned and I'll say it publicly now by some of the publications on Prime TV I know that the permanent secretary here is working with the IBS so we established especially during the coverage of uh, Sesheke we think that there was quite some sensational reporting which we believe is not in the interest of the public the chief government spokesperson also reaffirmed government's commitment towards fighting corruption in the country as a country we should be very proud our attendance at the African Union uh, got a lot of glory. I think uh, we were uh, identified as a country truly 
uh, putting up a gallant fight in terms of uh, the fight against corruption. At the same occasion, Minister of Higher Education, Professor Ngandulo, said the scrapping off of meal allowances from the University of Zambia and the Copper Belt University is meant to help other students in other institutions who could not manage school fees. So the decision, like any good parent, to support the other university was born out of exactly what I'm telling you. Because the other students have been coming to my office. And one of these days, when I have students in my office like that, I would like to invite you members of the press so that you see how these children actually cry. Meanwhile, local government minister Vincent Mwale told journalists that government will, in the current sitting of parliament, table the local government's bill that supports decentralization. Cabinet at its sitting did give a go ahead to the Minister of Law Government to present uh, the repealed Law Government Bill to Parliament uh, in the course of this session, possibly next week. Patrick Mulenga, ZNBC News, uh, Lusaka. Government through the Industrial Development Corporation, IDC, has injected one million kwacha to support the Zampao. Zampam outgrow Outgrower Scheme Project in Kanchibia District of Muchinga Province. Zanis reports from Mpika that President Edgar Lungu is tomorrow expected to launch the Zampam Outgrower Scheme in Kanchibia. Details in this report. President Edgar Lungu is tomorrow, Thursday, February 14, expected in Muchinga Province for a two-day official visit. The president is expected to land in Impika by 0830 hours and proceed to Kanchibia district. In particular, he will be uh, launching an outgrower scheme under Zampam. The nation knows that Zampam uh, is uh, a state-owned uh, company and uh, we have a huge plantation with over 7,000 hectares of palm. Production has already commenced. Now, besides the, that huge farm which is there, uh, the company, uh, which is an, uh, it's an enterprise of government, it's under IDC, uh, thought it was appropriate to out, uh, rather scale up, to scale up uh, the production of palm by uh, involving uh, small-scale farmers within the uh, copper area where the farm is. The president is also expected to officially launch the Mount Million Quacha Medical Hub in Mpika District on Friday. This hub will be servicing three provinces, the Sunder Medical Stores, to be servicing Muchinga, um, Northern, and Iruapula, and is centrally located here. The construction was uh, completed some, uh, some time back, and as usual, the president wants you uh, to complete a project, then he comes to commission. He doesn't want to commission in complete structures. President Lungu, who will be accompanied by cabinet ministers and senior government officials, is expected to fly back to Lusaka on Friday after the engagements. Jonathan Kuka, Zanis News, in Impika, Muchinga Province. A Minister of Information and Broadcasting Services Permanent Secretary Chan Dakasolo has urged media houses to be professional if they are to remain relevant in the country. In an interview with ZNBC News to mark World Radio Day, Mr. Kasolo said the freedom that the press enjoys should be cherished by all media players. He said government has created an enabling environment for radio stations to thrive and grow their businesses. Mr. Casolo said radio is an important aspect in the growth of the media industry in the country. He said that the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has always been eager to celebrate World Radio Day because of the importance that radio plays in national development. As far as the Ministry is concerned, uh, we are very, very uh, determined that Radio Day, uh, World Radio Day, is com commemorated uh, with as much pomp as we can, we can get. Of course, we haven't had a march or anything like that, but I uh, would like the people to know that the Minister of uh, Information and Bro Broadcasting Services is very keen for the people to recognize the importance of uh, the World Radio Day. In dissemination of information, both television and uh, radio are extremely important. And we want people to get the truth, people to make up their minds based on accurate information. 
And just now we take a break. Up next is business news. Northwestern Province Minister Nathanael Mubukwano says government is focused on agriculture diversification, including mining and value addition to uplift the livelihood of people in the rural communities. Mr. Mubukwano was speaking during the media breakfast launch of the Expo Northwestern Northwest Zambia 2019 in Lusaka. The minister also invited the opposition members of parliament in the province to support the initiative. He said the budget for the expo, which will take place from August 18th to the 24th, 2019, under the theme Unveiling the Hidden Treasures, will be announced soon. And Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Wellis Mangimela said the expo is expected to boost trade linkages and spur economic growth. And meanwhile, Expo National Coordinator Christopher Walia so the Expo will unlock and build capacity in all sectors of the economy in Northwestern Province. We have enormous potential in the agriculture sector. This includes both livestock and aquaculture development. As a province, we are the number one producer of pineapples high-quality organic honey from our natural forests. We produce a lot of maize, grain, and the famous Solwezi beans. The Northwestern province enjoys normal to above normal rainfall annually. This makes it a very suitable region for agriculture promotion. The government of the Republic of Zambia seeks to pursue economic diversification and job creation through value addition and industrialization anchored on agriculture, mining, tourism sectors uh, and overall success in this strategic area will be driven by private sector investment while government will continue to play its role of improving the policy and business environment. The Northwestern province is blessed with fertile soils it is blessed with abundant uh, rain and water resources. The source of the Zambezi and the Kafiwe is from the northwestern province. Abundant veget vegetation and the strategic location. The northwestern province is strategically located. The northwestern province has boundaries with the Congo and the Angola, and that provides opportunities for international gateways. About 30 local and foreign prospective investors have indicated readiness to start investment projects in the agricultural sector in northern province. Provincial Minister Brian Mundubile has revealed that investors who attended last year's investment exposition forum are ready to begin actualizing their plans by the end of the first quarter of 2019. Mr. Mundubile disclosed this when he addressed provincial heads of government departments during a post-expo briefing held in Kasama. The minister also cited the Kasaba Bay Tourism Resort as one of the places that most investors are eyeing for construction of top-class hotels. It was the biggest event in the northern province in 2018. The northern province investment and tourism exposition, which was graced by President Edgar Lungo, attracted several local and foreign potential investors. And the Northern Province Administration has announced that some of the prospective investors are ready to begin implementing their investment plans. We can count more than 30 already in the agriculture sector. That's a huge success as it were. We also got uh, the, about three investors on uh, Kasaba Bay. There were two Zambian investors and one foreign investor. And uh, they're all looking very enthusiastic to come and invest. Basically, in terms of investment, they're all looking at hotels. So we need to move in very quickly with these businesses that we can start within the first half of this year. And then we'll refocus on the bigger ones, like uh, you know, this, uh, the Chinese company that is coming in agriculture. And acting Provincial Deputy Permanent Secretary Sineva Kambenja has urged government officers within the province to support the implementation of investment projects. Let's take ownership of the outcomes of the export. I think we need to be proactive 
if there is an issue that has come out and you feel that it falls within your line of duty, I think we need to be proactive and follow up these issues. Nkweto Mumba Fozanis in Kasama. Mines and Minerals Development Minister Richard Musukwa says it is government's desire to ensure a balance is strike between mining benefits accruing to citizens and foreign investors. The minister said this through the Luapula province permanent secretary Felix Piwi during a stakeholders engagement workshop on mining in Mansa. Ruben Chomba now gives us the details in the following report. They have gathered here with a common purpose to plan for sustainable mineral resources exploration in the country for the benefit of citizens. And Minister of Mines Richard Musukwa says mineral extraction should go hand in hand with the sustainable mining operation. Mr. Musukwa said this in a speech read on his behalf by Luapra Province Permanent Secretary Felix Piri. The government commitment is reflected in the fabric of the mineral resource development policy, which puts the interest of the citizens at the center. Our policy is aligned with the tenets of the African mining vision, which requires that in exploiting of mineral resources, we must employ strategies that ensure maximum benefit to citizens. And Mr. Musukwa also says there is need to ensure there is a balance in terms of mining benefits to citizens and foreign investors. Among those in attendance are traditional leaders from Wapra province, officials from the Zambia Development Agency and the Minister of Labor as well as representatives of small scale miners. The holding of the workshop is timely as government wants to increase stakeholder participation in mining activities. Well, that wraps up business news. Thank you so much for watching us and for watching. Join us for more business news on Friday. Minister of Information and Broadcasting Services Permanent Secretary Chan Dakasolo has urged media houses to produce a content which is in line with the Zambian culture. Mr. Kasolo was speaking last night during the launch of the Diamond Television 2019 content. The Permanent Secretary said there is need for media institutions to continue promoting local content. Mr. Casolo assured private and public media institutions of government support and protection. And Diamond TV Chief Executive Officer Costa Mwansa appealed to government to help the media industry. It is very, very critical that we understand that content is what drives the nation forward. If we lose our own content, we are going to behave like the content from the countries where the content comes from. You will find people speaking American because you're always showing American films, American uh, uh, scripts and so on. It will be a Zambia that is historic and a Zambia that is Western. If we start showing Chinese, again we become Chinese. You see, the influence of the media on the people cannot be overemphasized. You know, the media drives people and countries to war. The media drives countries and societies out of poverty by making them believe in themselves. We sat and looked to say, I think there's a huge vacuum in terms of the lifestyle aspect. There's a huge vacuum. And when we speak lifestyle, we're talking things from a healthy living, uh, fitness. We are talking about basically... Uh, when we talk pop culture, there are so many successful Zambians that are doing a great job in terms of fashion. 
And finally, in sports in Kana Football Club, this afternoon came from behind to beat visiting El Ali of Sudan by two goals to one. Now, this was in the CAF Confederations Group C match played at Inkana Stadium in Kitwe. Now, with a waterlogged pitch following a heavy downpour earlier, Kana failed to impress in the early minutes. And El Ali took advantage in the seventh minute, scoring through Willard Hamid, who beat Inkana defender Ben Ban. But seven minutes later, Fred Tushimange leveled the Kitwe boys. Captain of the side, Water Walia, won it for Nkana in the 75th minute with a check tap in after he received a pass from veteran midfielder Simon Walia. Earlier, former Nkana Hitman, who is now in the books of El Ali Idris Mbombo, had a chance to give his side a lead, but his shot went over the bar. Now, the win for Nkana has pushed the Kitwe Giants to three points, joining Zesco and El Ali on top of Group C. This is after Nkana lost their opening match to Zesco by two goals to nil uh, ten days ago. El Ali's next fixture will be in Indola in a week's time against Zesco United, who are taking on Asante Kontoko of Ghana away in Kumase this evening. We know Nkana will again be at home in their next fixture as they will be hosting Asante Kontoko of Ghana. Well, that sporting item wraps up the main news. And before we go away, let's take a quick look at the stories that made headlines. 11 people are feared dead in Chelenge after the boat they were on capsized on Lake Mweru. The Drug Enforcement Commission has arrested former Zambia Air Force Commander Lieutenant General Eric Chimese. The United Party for National Development has scooped the Sesheke parliamentary by election, but the PF says it will petition the results or into violence. And finally, in sports in Kana Football Club, this afternoon came from behind to beat visiting El Ali of Sudan by two goals to one. That sporting item wraps up the main news. It says congratulations to the Kitre boys, the Nkana Football Club, for their victory. My name is Collins Mienga, and my sign language interpreter was Pastor Samson Mwale. On behalf of the entire production team, keep watching ZNBC. It's bye for now.